this is the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. So about the Z06 version of the Corvette. Well, the main headline thing is, you know, the flat plane crank, 8,500 RPM redline engine that is just glorious to listen to. But the styling's also nicely improved here. And this one has the aero package on it, which goes even one step further, especially in this orange color, which uh, really just screams in your face and is impossible to miss. But anyway, so up front here, the first thing you'll probably notice is not only do you have a unique front bumper there with some extra cooling of course to cool this beast of an engine but also the whole body itself is 3.6 inches wider and so that was done to accommodate these enormous tires 275 wide tires in the front here which chevy says is the widest front tire ever fitted to a mid-engine car out back you have 345 wide tires so that explains why you had to flare out the body uh, but not only was it practical but it also just looks super awesome and uh, again especially with this aero package with the more aggressive you know dive planes there in the front Front and the side skirts and that enormous wing in the back uh, you know it really uh, just is extreme from every angle and just looks so so good and uh, then also going out to the back there though I love how you have the quad exhaust there in the middle now versus the exhaust out on the corners on a regular C8 and uh, you can still here on the hardtop see the engine uh, under the glass there and you definitely want to drool at that engine here especially now being the special Z06 engine um, and uh, yeah it just looks really nice out back there still and so yes overall I mean the C8 Corvette was already a very cool looking vehicle but this just makes it even cooler and uh, man oh man this thing <laughs> really has a lot of presence and really stands out. The interior of the Z06 is basically the same as any other C8 Corvette not too many things that differentiate this this one is a 3LZ so it's the loaded up version so you have the leather seats these ones have the optional uh, micro suede inserts here as well but they're still perforated thankfully they're heated and cooled seats here both in the 2LZ and in the 3LZ here and this one has like the optional carbon fiber and suede steering wheel so in addition to the Z06 badging you get here on it uh, you have the carbon fiber of course of the paddle shifters and uh, you know of course it's the gauges are a little bit more unique with the higher red line and all that but I mean it's basically the same uh, you know with everything else here so that's why it's not worth mentioning but it's still a very nice place to be even with this one's nearly $150,000 price tag you know especially here for the 3LZ you have the micro suede here on the roof you know for the headliner and I mean the seats are so comfortable with this Bose stereo and all kinds of nice other amenities if you want to have a deep dive on a C8 Corvette interior uh, my wife and I several years ago did a regular C8 Corvette interior review and just did a deep dive on just the interior I'll link that video at the end of this one if you want to hear all the details but most people don't really care. It's all about the driving experience here in the Z06, so let's go for a drive. And the Z06 here has the regular Corvette key. Nothing special here on the key, unfortunately, either, but still a really nice key nonetheless. And uh, so you just put your foot on the brake, hit the engine start button, <laughs> and it really roars to life. It revs to 3,000 RPMs when you start it up. All right, so setting off here in the Corvette Z06. Well, I've only driven this car in tour mode. I've been driving super slowly so far to preserve my first acceleration reaction here. Uh, but just setting off here in the Z06, uh, you know, you actually have surprisingly good visibility for a car this low too, like any other C8. I've just always been pretty impressed that, you know, it really drops down nicely in the front so you can actually see where you're going really well, which is important, especially whenever you're doing any kind of sporty or track driving. Uh, you know, good to have that better visibility. And uh, otherwise, like, you know, with the magnetic ride control here, you know, it really does a good job of keeping everything really nice and smooth. This one, thankfully, doesn't have the Z07 package. That does make things even stiffer, uh, but this, you know, for all Z06s, does have a little bit of a stiffer suspension setup. The springs are about 30% stiffer, and of course, the damper tuning is unique here for the Z06 as well. Uh, but, you know, so far, just again, at low speeds, you know, on pretty nice roads, uh, so far, it's not, you know, any more uncomfortable than I remember the C8 being. Another thing I'm noticing about the Z06 here that is different from a regular C8 Corvette is that the uh, dual clutch transmission isn't quite as smooth as a regular C8. Obviously it has more power to deal with. You know, I can definitely feel the engagement points. It's one of the rougher dual clutches I've experienced recently. This is a very racy, you know, sporty car, so I think for most people that'll be okay. But it's just one thing that I've noticed that really stands out is you really feel that engagement point. Um, and I think part of that is just the fact that they have beefed everything up. It's got an extra clutch plate in there. They also beefed up the transaxle and everything so that it can handle the extra power, the extra performance. So that's just, I guess, par for the course here for this transmission, but it's just not going to be as smooth as like a PDK or something like that. Quick launch control, here we go. It has a 5.5 liter flat plane crank V8 engine. It has 670 
70 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, which is actually five pound-feet less than a regular C8 Corvette, but it doesn't matter because you have 180 extra horsepower over a regular Corvette. So zero to 60 time, car and driver got 2.6 seconds, and I believe that from my launch. I'm sure it wasn't an optimal launch that I did, but I mean, it is very, very fast and very, very impressive. And this vehicle only weighs 3,666 pounds, so, you know, it's, you know, not like insanely light, but it's light enough that that much horsepower with a dual clutch transmission and a launch control is definitely going to be enough to get you there to, you know, those very fast acceleration times. Quarter mile time is also fast, 10.5 seconds at 131 miles per hour. And also, the way it deploys the power is so impressive too, because, you know, like I had the wheel turn, they're accelerating at, you know, pretty heavy throttle, and it still was gripping flawlessly. No grip issues whatsoever. And part of that is because you have, again, three 45 wide tires in the back there, so no issues with grip. And by the way, the exhaust is now in just the sport mode. Oh, but the crackles and the pops. It's a multi-mode exhaust, of course, but got some tight corners here. Explodes out of the corners. The grip is impressive, even just with the Pilot Sport 4 tires you have on this. If you want to go for even more aggressive grip with the Z07 package, you get Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires and they're the ZR uh, compounds. I mean, really aggressive. That also gives you even more stiffer uh, damper tuning. It's 40% stiffer than a regular C8 versus 30% in this. But anyway, oh, first gear. Oh, oh. <laughs> because it is definitely, definitely so much higher performing, especially in those upper RPMs, than what you'd expect from, from something of this much horsepower. I mean, way faster feeling than a Hellcat, which has more horsepower, for example, and things like that. So don't get hung up on the horsepower number not being sky high, like we saw with even the C7, which had, you know, higher horsepower numbers. This is hands down more thrilling to me, at least. <laughs> Even just those lower RPMs, you don't even have to ring it out all the way. Just those lower RPMs are also really nice sounding. But the upper RPMs are definitely where all the magic's at. But one thing I love is that you can actually enjoy the higher RPMs because it has nice short gearing that you can, you know, rev out second or third or whatever and you're not going at insane speeds. And so unlike stuff like the Shelby GT350, for example, which really has tall gears, that's a, a joy to ring out as well with that insanely high revving engine and that. But this, I can actually, it feels, one, it feels torquier than a GT350. Um, and it also just, it, you can actually exploit those higher RPMs more so, I think, than you can that. Obviously, it's different. That's a manual versus this having eight gears to choose from here with a dual clutch. But, oh man, yeah, this thing is... Unreal, and also with the uh, aerodynamics package you have here, you get double the downforce of a regular Z06. Uh, it's like 760 pounds of uh, downforce at like 186 miles per hour or something like that. You know, some irrelevant number unless you're racing, really. But uh, you know, gives you the awesome looks, but does give you a little bit of extra downforce there. And we got some more nice corners coming up here. And I'm just leaving the window down because this exhaust just sounds too good to not listen to it. But man, this thing is just so impressive with the handling so in addition to the you know pretty low curb weight the insane grip um, which can, can even grip your again with that co7 package there's also really impressive brakes so you don't get carbon ceramics as standard but you get carbon ceramics as an 8500 dollars option which this car does have now without the carbon ceramics you'd have 14.6 inch rotors in the front 15s in the rear actually and there's six piston uh, brakes in the front brembos and four pistons in the rear now when you go to this carbon ceramics you go up to 15.7 inch uh, rotors in the front, 15.4 in the rear, uh, and uh, you know, either way, very impressive braking, but I'm happy to have the carbon ceramics with a car that's this fast. Uh, probably not necessary, but uh, you know, at least unless you're doing track driving, but certainly appreciate it because they really haul this thing down to a stop very, very quickly and impressively, but... Yeah, the way the 
this thing leaps to speed in those upper RPMs. It's really, really impressive. And nice, nice uh, tight corner there and really did a good job of staying buttoned down. I mean, it is so flat. I mean, the C8, regular C8 was already really, really good. I think this just adds a little bit of extra edge. The C8 felt a little safe at times for the regular version. And this, you know, being a little bit uh, edgier with the extra power and the extra grip, uh, just means you have higher limits, uh, but it also just, to me, feels a little more neutral and a little more oversteering, and I, I can't even approach the limits of grip here. Uh, I can't even get this thing to fishtail at normal speeds on normal roads, but, um, you know, it just feels a little more playful than a regular C8, in my opinion. And if you want to continue to upgrade the handling, you can also get uh, some carbon fiber wheels that are between 10 and 12 grand, depending on the finish. Um, but those wheels will shave off another 41 pounds of unsprung mass, um, which will, you know, just increase the handling, improve the steering response, all that stuff even more. Um, and uh, so, yeah, very, very impressive. They also beefed up the cooling. So if you are someone who's going to really exploit this car at 10 tenths and really, you know, push it on the track, you have one extra cooling uh, radiator in the front. There was two before. Now there's another one in the middle there. And you also have an extra oil cooler. So you have two, one on each side here in these air intake scoops in the side. And so, you know, they've definitely beefed up the cooling. Even the fans have been upgraded to be at a heavier duty than before. So better cooling, you know, in addition to all of that grip, all of that performance. And also there's no penalty really for going for the convertible if you want that because the rigidity is the same between the coupe and the convertible, they say. Mostly because I'm sure, you know, it's still kind of a convertible with being able to take off this top here. But, um, you know, so that's also kind of a nice thing. You do gain an extra hundred pounds going for the convertible and you also lose the great view of the engine because all the convertible top hardware gets in the way of that. Those are the only two compromises, but otherwise, you know, the convertible would be really nice to have um, because I believe you have a lowering rear window here so you could hear even more sounds. Um, and of course, you just have an easier way to get that um, open top experience if you want it. But then whenever you're done driving crazy, you can just roll the windows up, put it in tour mode, and the exhaust quiets down. And you still have some tire noise from these massive tires. But otherwise, you know, it's a nice sedate cruiser here on the highway with the back to ride suspension once again and all that. It's just really just cruises along and it'd be a really nice long distance driver as well as long as you don't get that Z07 package which might not be that bad but you know just a little bit stiffer but as far as the regular Z06 suspension I'm really happy that it's not overboard here uh, you know thanks to these bag neck ride control dampers it just really is just such a nice vehicle as far as having the duality of the aggressiveness and also the comfort depending on what mood you're in and it's really nice that you can custom tailor everything with the my mode and with the Z mode to you you know, have it exactly how you want it. But anyway, thanks to Chevy, I will have the C06 for a few more days here. So I'm gonna drive all over the place and really enjoy this car as much as I can. Then I'll come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy, which just should be uh, pretty funny, as well as my thoughts on the pricing and how it compares to its very few competitors. So I've been driving the Z06 here for a couple more days. I wish I had a whole week with this, but I don't. But man, oh man, this thing is so amazing. So I absolutely love it. And aside from all the other observations I already gave here, uh, I think the one thing over the past few days that's really impressed me is just how much fun this car is at low speeds. You know, something this is insanely fast, you know, under a three second zero to 60. I mean, a one second zero to 30 mile per hour time is what car and driver got. So fast that you would think that it's gonna be a complete bore unless you are are wildly, uh, you know, violating speed limits. And then the reality is that that's not the case because they gave this nice short gearing. And so because of that, it means that you're able to really enjoy the higher RPMs a little more than something like a GT350. And I just really love that because I was able to even, you know, just do a grocery run and not have to be going insanely fast in order to have fun. And this motor still sounds good at any RPM as well. Uh, but, you know, you're able to actually exploit those higher RPMs. And another thing that I found while I was driving, um, you know, the past couple of days is that it's really a nice level of grip, obviously having tons of grip from the tires, but also the fact that it's still playful and it's actually more playful than a regular C8 in my opinion. But I mean, like, I'm not going fast and I'm able to get up to, you know, 6,000 RPMs and still enjoy that while doing 30 miles an hour. It's great, but... 
Um, but yeah, I actually found the limits of grip a little bit, and there's a few times where I was either doing a 90 degree turn and you know punched it a little bit, or even just you know on some back road just giving it a little bit of gas. It does play with you, but it feels very safe still for a vehicle that you know is as extreme and high performing as this is. It felt very approachable whenever I started to you know find the limits of the rear tires. It it didn't scare me like I thought it might, um, and it actually gave me confidence that you know it was going to do what I wanted it to do, that it wasn't going to you know backfire or bite back at me. Obviously, I'm sure if you're a complete idiot, this car will bite back, but if you use your brain, I mean, it is really, really good and just enables you to feel like you have superpowers in this thing because you're able to just, you know, push it to a higher degree uh, and and just have so much fun. I mean, that was even just a rev to four grand and it still just sounds so gnarly. Oh, man. And also with the magnetic ride control dampers, I've, you know, been using this as like a daily driver. Obviously, it's only three seasons really, but, you know, you could daily drive this. It's comfortable enough as long as you don't mind getting in and out of something super low. I mean, visibility is great. You have the front axle lift here. It makes it a lot more livable as well. Um, and it just, I don't know, to me, I was just like, I would totally daily drive one of these if I was in the very fortunate position to have one of these. But even like I did a grocery run in it. And one thing I will say about groceries is that rear uh, trunk area gets very hot. Um, and so if you have anything that you're worried about getting warm or hot, especially perishables and stuff, you're going to want to put them in the front. Thankfully, the front is nice and deep and I was able to fit about five or six grocery bags in there as you can see and it still had room for more so it's actually you know decent bit of uh, practicality there which is a, a nice little perk not like anyone really cares that much another thing that people probably don't care that much about is the fuel economy but you're really gonna have to not care I think this is the worst fuel economy actually I know this is the worst fuel economy I've ever gotten in a car that I've reviewed over about 100 miles of driving is all that I had time to do but I managed to get 10.4 mpg and these are rated 12 in the city 19 on the highway and 14 combined so i wasn't expecting anything good obviously with this engine you know everyone should know that but um you know i just am not even getting the city rating now obviously i was not taking it very easy i know i did a little bit of highway driving earlier and then i did do a little bit of casual driving on that grocery run uh, where i wasn't going super fast most of the time but um you know it was just kind of surprising that it's still even lower than the 12 total range it was showing me when this thing showed up with a full tank was 200 miles and over <laughs> there's the there's the grip a little bit um, but even just you know over a little bit of driving here uh, you know 100 miles it's showing me 94 miles of range with about a little under a half tank of gas left so I mean you'll be going through gas fast in this thing uh, so probably not the best Grand Tour either in that regard um, Although if, if gear, you know, you might be able to really coast on the highway and you know, get some decent range out of it, but still, I mean, it's low. Not like anyone cares, but just a heads up there if you are someone who, you know, is buying one of these and uh, doesn't have a very healthy fuel budget. Um, but, you know, anyone buying one of these, obviously, these aren't cheap. And so that's the last thing I'll mention here is the pricing and how it compares to the competitors. So um, these start these days around $115,000, assuming you can get one at sticker price. And then, you know, this one as tested is about $147,000. It's about $8,500 for the Aero kit, $8,500 for the carbon ceramics, which I did really appreciate the carbon ceramics this week. I'm usually not like a huge carbon ceramics fan. Uh, but in this car, it's so fast that I feel like that is worth spending. I'd have to try the regular brakes to really compare. But, um, you know, that, that might be, this might be one of the few cars where if I were buying it, I would actually option on the carbon ceramic brakes, even if I don't plan to do track driving in it. But so anyway, this one all total, like I said, 147 or so. Now, if it were me and I decided to skip the carbon ceramics, I'd probably be happy with a 2LZ package. This is the 3LZ. 2LZ still gives you the heated and cooled seats. You know, there's a few things you can add on, but it gives you like the, car, the uh, camera rear view mirror, which I think you're definitely going to want. So I think that, you know, I built one that's about 125 the way I would build one personally without the aero kit and stuff. Um, and so, you know, to me, I think that that's, you know, still a really good price for a supercar, especially. <laughs> oh man. And it's just, you know, I've never been a Corvette fan, to be totally honest. I've never wanted a Corvette. I've always admired them and been impressed by them. I've had a lot of fun reviewing them, but typically there's always been other things that are similarly priced that I would rather have over, you know, all the Corvettes that I've tested over all these years.
what? I think this is actually the first Corvette I desperately want. I don't want to give this car back. Um, and this is honestly probably the hardest one for me to ever give back as far as press cars goes. And, you know, in the hundred to $150,000 price range, I can't think of anything else I would rather have, especially as far as new cars goes. I mean, what does that get you? An average 911 these days or something? This is so much more exciting. Uh, I haven't driven the new 911, but from past 911s, I, just, I can't imagine it being better than this. Um, you know, obviously the GT3s and stuff are fantastic, and that could be a worthy competitor, but it's just more expensive, just like everything else. This is, you know, like a third of the price of even like a 296 GTB these days, which is, you know, uh, going down to the V6 and uh, the hybrid thing. This, you know, this is the car that no one really makes anymore. And even though compared to the old stuff, if you want to factor in the used uh, stuff that's appreciated, maybe down to 150, you know, stuff like a McLaren 720S or even a Ferrari 458 Spider, which I just reviewed a couple of years ago. Same thing with 720S. I've driven one of those, reviewed that. This is hands down better than those. It is just absolutely more fun. It sounds better. Um, and I mean, especially, especially compared to the Ferrari, this is so much better handling than that. If I had the money to spend on something in this price range, 100% this is what I would buy. This is the first Corvette I desperately want to own, and um, I, I absolutely love it. And so if you find yourself in the very fortunate position to be able to you know, afford one of these, go for it. They're not going to make stuff like this forever, and this is a truly special car. It reminds you of that every time you do that awesome gold start, every time you just dip into the gas, even just a little bit. This thing is perfect with the way it's set, it's set up. It's perfect as far as getting rid of all of my minor complaints I had with the regular C8. This just, it's its the perfect sports car in my opinion. Yes, it'd be fun with a manual, but honestly, I've just been paddle shifting all week and it's been a blast. Uh, the auto transmission and stuff, you know, is fine if you want to do that, but why would you do that in something like this anyway? I want to manually shift it and, you know, rev this engine out the way I want to rev it out. Um, and I mean, the, the clutch is still not the smoothest. That's the one other thing I will note. Um, but, you know, honestly, I've actually had the transmission into its more aggressive settings. I love how whenever you go and, you know, manually shift, I like that it bangs into gears and just, I mean, it's violent at certain times and it is just magical. And yeah, I just, I absolutely adore this thing. And so anyway, I won't keep going on and on, but um, this is really high ranking as far as favorite cars I've ever reviewed. People ask me that all the time and it's really hard to always say, this this could be it. Um, it, it really is that, that, that good. I am just so blown away by the Z06 and the fact that they even made this thing, got it approved, made it as awesome as they did, made it as good as they did. It's just, it's just mind blowing in all the ways. So anyway, one last little acceleration here. <laughs> Ooh, and then those brakes slow you down nice and quick, which is what you're gonna wanna uh, have in something like this. But anyway, so huge, enormous thanks to Chevrolet for providing me here with this Z06 for a few days uh, to spend with. It's been amazing. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on the Z06 in the comments below. And uh, please like and subscribe to keep these videos coming and uh, stay tuned. There will hopefully be an E-Ray review from me shortly as well. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.